quilt stories. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to show you one of my quilts from start to finish. I belong to a group called Cloth in Common and we're an international group of 12 artists and every two months we're set a prompt. And the topic for this quilt was compromise. So I had to think long and hard, but I decided that marriage is a perfect compromise. Compromise was a prompt by a group that I'm in called Cloth in Common. We're an international group of 12 artists from all around the world. And every two months we have a prompt. And the prompt for this one was compromise, which I found a little bit daunting, but I just thought I'll see what I can do. So we have a fabulous blog uh, in which we post all the information about all our prompts and we have a gallery. So please check it out. You might recognize my self portrait up on the right there. Although we have eight weeks to do each prompt, we blog every week. And so you can check out the different thoughts about every topic. And these are just a couple of them, all included on the blog. So compromise, bit tricky, but the first thing that came to my mind was marriage, because marriage really is a compromise of sorts. You have two people that come together and they sort of get to know each other and they make compromises, a sort of perfect union, we hope. Those traditional quilt makers amongst you will recognize this as a couple of versions of a double wedding ring quilt. I did a fair bit of research on the internet about double wedding ring quilts. Certainly not my traditional way of working and it seemed far too complex for me. There are many opportunities to download free versions of patterns and also some really interesting variations as well. But I sort of thought I would just keep it pretty simple. My original thought was to have those melon shapes in all those different segments. And I was seriously considering doing some paper piecing, but I gave up that idea pretty quickly. This is the shape that I stuck to and I just created a couple of templates uh, with template plastic and just created the shape, but I didn't have the quarter inch seam allowance. I also decided to paint my fabric, which is normally what I do. So here's just a quick little video on how I did it. Painting the main background piece was really fun. It was a lovely sunny day out in the garden and you can hear all the birds tweeting away madly. I just did a rainbow of colours and you can see I'm being really rough with the paint strokes. I want a bit of texture. Even though this was quite a large piece of fabric, it didn't take very long at all. And now the last colour. I actually used a fluoro paint, even though it looked really, really bright in the jar. It just added to it and gave it that little bit of zing. Just speeding up the video here. I was really pleased with how it turned out. And here it is, all dry in the studio and ready for the next step. I also wanted to do a gradation of colours for my melon shapes and so I did two sets of colours. This is the purple, same colour just diluted with water. Then they've just been scrunched up and left outside to dry completely. Once they're completely dry, I've brought them inside and I'm just going to press them now and they'll be lovely and textured. You can see that where the paint was exposed to the air, it stayed darker and where it hasn't been exposed to the air and the light, it's gone lighter. And this is what creates the really interesting textures. Some of them look quite 3D. Pressing serves to heat set the fabric paint, as well as making the fabric seem a little bit softer.
and here's the lightest piece. lovely textures here. And the darkest piece is really dramatic. And here they are ready to be used in the quilt. I pre-fuse the fabric. I like Misty Fuse as my fusible. And so then I just traced around and cut out all the shapes. And here's a whole pile of them ready to go. I started off by putting them together. I wanted to have the two colours and then grading out to single colours at the side of the quilt. But in the end, I just worked with the individual shapes. I played around with some colours just so I could work out what to do. I've never done this before and it was a new experience for me. So the idea is that you have the interlocking rings going up and down and in and out. Here is sort of my practice pieces and I laid out all the pieces to make sure I had enough and luckily I did. I needed to find the centre of my piece. So this is the template which is a, a complete circle that I put in the centre of my quilt. I also wanted to embellish the fabric a little bit even though it was really nicely painted I felt it needed some text. I always seem to think it needs text. So what I did is I created a word cloud. In fact, I created two word clouds. There are many programs on the internet and this is the one I used for these word clouds. And all I did was I uh, looked up a thesaurus of words for compromise and marriage. And so I ended up creating these two word clouds. You can see the one on the right is for marriage and all sorts of words that uh, match up for marriage. And then on the other side, there are words that uh, symbolize compromise. And I created a Thermofax screen, which is a little uh, mini silk screen. And these are my Thermofax screens ready for printing. And here are some areas on the quilt that have the words printed on them. It's a great way to just add your own personal touch, even if you're using commercial fabrics. This is the quilt before quilting. After I've fused on all the melon shapes, I played around with it for a while. And the idea was that two individuals come from two different sides and then they merge in the middle. So one side was supposed to be mauves and the other side sort of pinks, but it got a little bit mixed up. But that's okay because down the centre line, they're a complete pair. I also wanted to paint some fabric for a backing piece. So this is a very large piece of cotton sateen, folded over, and then I painted it with fabric paint. I then raided the garden and covered the whole piece with lots of branches and twigs and leaves of all different shapes and sizes. And quite a few of them are overlapping. It didn't take long to dry. It was a beautiful warm day. Once I took all the leaves off, I was actually a bit disappointed. It didn't look like I had very much sun print at all. But remember I had double folded it? So I peeled back that top layer. Look at all the leaf prints that were underneath. This is the sort of thing I was hoping to see on the top layer. But now, once it's opened up, I have lots of different textures and shapes and colours. And it's now a really beautiful piece. So then I got onto the quilting. I have a Benina Q20 that I used for quilting all the melon shapes. And I just did that really cool up and down shape that you go up and down, then you come back and it creates interesting oval shapes. And it was really easy to do on the Q20. I really enjoyed doing it. But I decided to do quarter inch diagonal lines uh, coming in from two directions and then crossing over in the middle. And 
I just found that it was better to use my Benina 770 with a walking foot. And I used the walking foot as the measurement for the lines. And this took me ages to do. Uh, with sort of, I had to pin up the sides and just work on small areas at a time. And I'd sort of change direction where I could, and that made it a bit more interesting, I think. So here you can see the diagonal lines coming in through the side. And then if you look to the left, you can see where those diagonal lines have met and they've crisscrossed. So that center circle where the union is complete has the crisscross. So here is my completed quilt. And I think it is a perfect compromise. I really enjoyed making it. And it's a bit out of my comfort zone, but I think that's what you have to do really, isn't it? When you're part of a group and you get prompts, that's been really great for me. And so I've really enjoyed creating quilts for Cloth in Common. So I hope you'll check out the blog and see some of the other quilts that I've made. All the links to any of the products that I've used and the Cloth in Common website are also down below. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my quilt from start to finish. You can see that I made decisions as I go along and that's really the way I usually work. If you've enjoyed this video, I really hope you'll subscribe so you'll be the first to know when I release more. There's lots of fabulous artists that have already been interviewed and lots more to come. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.